In this video, we'll be setting up the radio connection for the default recommended hardware setup for DreamFlight VTOL. After the flight controller assembly has been completed, we need to plug in our radio receiver. DreamFlight VTOL currently supports standard PWM, PPM, and SBUS type receiver inputs. I'll be using a Spectrum PWM receiver, which I've already bound to my radio. Each receiver pin needs to be plugged into the designated pin on the Teensy. For the default code, this means that my throttle channel goes to pin 15, aileron goes to 16, elevator to 17, rudder to 20, channel 5 to 21, which corresponds to throttle cut in the code, and channel 6 to pin 22, which is a free auxiliary channel. If you're using a PPM receiver, the default pin on the Teensy is pin 23. If you're using an SBUS receiver, you'll need to plug it into pin 21. If you're using a custom hardware setup with different pinouts, be sure to make the necessary changes in the pin declaration section of the code. Lastly, make sure your receiver is getting power from the Teensy. Next, we need to go into the code to specify what receiver type we'll be using. Open the code in Arduino and uncomment only your receiver type in the user specified defined section at the top. Then scroll down to the main loop. Here you'll need to uncomment the print radio data function and make sure it's the only printing function uncommented. We can now plug the Teensy into the computer and upload the code to the board. If you disconnected the two small power pads on the back of the Teensy to prevent servos from drawing power from your computer's USB, you'll need to supply external power to the board before the code will upload. Once uploaded, open the serial monitor and wait for the code to enter the main loop, indicated by three quick blinks followed by a quick blink every second or so. If it looks like this and no values are changing even when moving your transmitter sticks, there may be a problem with the wiring to the receiver. The values being printed are the radio failsafe values because the code has detected a bad receiver connection or out of bounds receiver values. If the connection is good, you should see something more like this. Let's check the functionality of each channel. Channel 1 should increase in value with increasing throttle input. Channel 2 should increase in value with right roll input. Channel 3 should increase with pitch down, and channel 4 should increase with left yaw. Channel 5 and 6 should respond to your radio's auxiliary switches. Note which switch you've assigned to channel 5, as channel 5 is assigned to the throttle cut functionality in the default code. If any of these are reversed, reverse the corresponding channel in your radio. If any of these do not respond to the correct stick and you're using a PWM receiver, check the pins plugging into the Teensy from the receiver. If you're using a PPM or SBUS receiver and cannot reassign channel outputs within your radio, make the necessary adjustment in the get commands function within the code. Next, we need to apply sub-trim and endpoint adjustment within our radio to get these values to the proper ranges. Center all the sticks, including throttle, and apply sub-trim within your radio to center channels 1 to 4 on 1500. You may not be able to get it perfect, but within 3 to 5 is close enough. Make sure your channel 5 switch has a definitive high and low state above and below 1500. When above 1500, throttle cut will engage and motors will not spin up. Now we just need to adjust the endpoints within the radio. Each channel should have a minimum value of 1,000 and a maximum value of 2,000. Again, within 3 to 5 is close enough. Our radio is now fully configured to work with DreamFlight VTOL. Go ahead and comment out the print radio data function to finish up. In the next video, we'll be covering the IMU data verification process to ensure we're getting good IMU data within the code. Be sure to subscribe for that, as well as future videos on modifying the code and getting flying. Thanks.